Welcome to Emerging Franchise Brands, the podcast that introduces you to the visionary founders of America's fastest growing franchise opportunities. We'll also hear from industry pros as they share insights on what it really takes to achieve the elusive milestone of 100 plus locations. I am your host, Frank Fumi, founder of i9 Sports, and my 20 year journey from inception to acquisition has given me a unique perspective on how to succeed in franchising. Join me as we welcome today's guest. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Emerging Franchise Brands Podcast. On today's show, I have David Cotillo, the founder of Be Balanced Natural Weight Loss Centers. David, how are you today? I am great, and it's great to be here. Thank you. It is great to have you on the show. So why don't we get kick things off by tell us exactly what you guys do? All right. We, it's kind of unique. Um, if I was sitting at a bar and someone said, what do you guys do? The quick answer would be, Be Balanced resolves the two biggest issues that women face as they age, stubborn weight and all the PMS menopausal symptoms. So it's two different things kind of combined. They're both very big industries on their own separately. And we have a natural way of solving both of those issues with one business. It's called Natural hormone balance is what we do. That's our method. David, you know everybody's thinking, how in the world did a guy get started in this business? What what <laughs> business do you have in being I part know. of Be Balanced Natural Weight Loss Center well, it's for women? I'm a sensitive guy, and I've been told that it's working well because I have one ovary. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but maybe I do. I don't know. But I will definitely tell you that, no, the reason I, I, I kind of fell into it is that I uh, my sister – had a small business called the Rejuvenation Center here in, in in Central Pennsylvania, and she was getting these incredible results. And I was looking at, I was leaving another business, and I was looking at this, going, "This is a real need." And so I ended up buying the rights to franchise her business, is what I ended up doing. So, so the business is really unique because. What I think just from, you know, the women in, in my life, I think of when there's an issue hormonal, they go to a doctor and or if there's weight loss centers as well. So what makes your business unique other than the fact that obviously it's relating to hormones, but let's talk about. Right. OK, I'm going to give you a really short, quick, it's, but it's a little bit of science. So I'll be as quick as I can with it. Women have two hormones, uh, two main hormones estrogen and progesterone. And then there's a third hormone called cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And what basically happens is when women hit a certain age, okay, the estrogen is, we call it the bad guy hormone. It's there to, uh, it, it, when I say it's bad guy, I mean, you need it for certain things, but it causes you to retain fat, retain fluid and to be tense mood wise. Mm -hmm. Whereas progesterone is the good guy hormone. It's the fat burner. It's a diuretic. It's the one that helps you stay calm. When those two are balanced in a woman, she's good. She could be like, hi, I'm 48 years old. I, I look good. I feel good. Everything's perfect. But we don't meet too many women that age that are saying that. Okay. What we're hearing is I'm struggling with the stubborn way. Nothing will work. I'm stricter than I ever was. And I can't lose the weight. Uh, I, we also hear I have hot flashes, sleep issues, energy issues, all these things. And it's like two different conversations. One is with their friend sitting at lunch saying, I'm struggling with this, you know, I'm eating a salad every day and I'm still, I can't lose this weight. Right. That's what they're saying to their friend. And then they go to their doctor and they're talking to him about their hot flashes, their mood, their sleep, their energy. It's like two different conversations. We're saying it's all connected to hormones and we're bringing it together into one conversation. What the deal is, what happens is stress is the key factor to all this. When you hit a certain age, stress causes you to need more cortisol, these women, because they have more symptoms, more than men they need more cortisol and the body can only make so much. And what happens is the body's like, I can't make enough cortisol. I need to make more. So to adjust, the body starts stealing the woman's progesterone to make it into cortisol so they can get through the day to live. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, it creates a condition called estrogen dominance where estrogen is higher than progesterone. That imbalance causes all menopausal symptoms but it, and, and PMS symptoms, but at the same time, it causes you not to be able to go into ketosis, to be able to burn fat. And so what we're doing is we're fixing this first. And by doing it, then we're able to do two things, give them the ability to lose that stubborn weight that they've been losing. And at the same time, get rid of those menopausal symptoms. And then you can't get rid of stress. So we have a method that we're not going to be able to get into all on the phone, uh, on the interview today, mm -hmm. but basically there's a way 
for them to maintain balance. And by maintaining balance, they can maintain their weight, they can maintain their um, just their balance, and they're able to keep their symptoms away. And so there's a way for them to just totally transform their quality of life. And this really is women 35 plus. And I will tell you that our market, just so you know, is not obese women. Can we help obese women? Absolutely. But our market is much bigger than that. Okay. It is literally all the women that say, and I'll just give you an example. The woman that says, hi, I'm 45 years old. I was, and I'm just using a size as an example. It can be any size. I was size six my whole life. Even when I got married and had kids, I gained weight, but I always got back to size six. That's my size. And then all of a sudden they hit 35 or 40 and they're at size 12 out of nowhere. It's that 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds. It's driving them nuts. They just want to feel like themselves again and get back to themselves. That's what they want. And that's what Be Balanced says. Hey, it's we, we're here you. We understand you're struggling. Your doctor isn't listening. Your nutritionist doesn't understand what's happening, you know, a lot of the times. So we understand what the core reason is. It's a hormone imbalance. By fixing that and giving you a specialized program, we're able to get you balanced and you're able to lose the stubborn weight and you're able to get back to yourself again and get rid of all these other symptoms. Can you share a little more details of the program of exactly how the therapy works or how the- Yeah, it's, the it's, it provide? definitely goes in, it definitely gets a, a little bit like into the, a little sciency. It's not a, really a word, but it gets, it gets <laughs> uh, it's a lot of science, but I will definitely tell you that what we're using is natural and homeopathic methods okay. to bring progesterone back up in line with estrogen. Like they're, they're getting- like a form of progesterone, only progesterone, nothing else, but it's natural and giving the body the ability to produce the progesterone like it wasn't doing before. And the goal is to get the progesterone balanced with the estrogen. And once that happens, a couple things happen. Their symptoms start to go away. The hot flashes, the mood, sleep, energy stuff, it, it, they get relieved of that. And at the same time, their body has the ability to lose that stubborn weight. It, obviously, there's a special diet that goes along with it, sure. a hormone balancing diet. There's special supplements. A couple of them are, are proprietary. And then there's a method. And it's a 14-week program that they start with. The first four weeks, though, is the weight loss part of it. And that is the hot button that draws the women in. They always rather look good than feel good. So the women that come in, they're caring about the weight first. But once they get rid of the other symptoms, like, oh, my gosh. I used to have 10 hot flashes a day and I don't have any anymore. I used to have trouble sleeping. Now I'm sleeping through the night. Mm -hmm. You know, I have more energy now. Once they appreciate that as much as the weight, but it wouldn't have drawn them in. What draws them in is the stubborn weight. It's the hot button. And it's it's just so prevalent out there. That's why the weight loss business is a multi-billion dollar business is because it they're, the, the biggest demographic for weight loss is women and women over 35. That is the biggest demographic and that's our market. So, and, and because this yeah. is all natural, this does not have to be a physician based franchise. Nope. nope. It's, and you know, what's neat about that, uh, Frank is it's symptom based. And what I mean by that is they take uh, a wellness quiz, like an assessment. And what it does is it tells us how many, you know, what oh, do I have? How many hot flashes do you have per day? How are you doing with sleeping? The more symptoms they have, the more severe their imbalance is. It's that mm. simple. All women have the same imbalance. It's how severe is it? And they can start with the same program. Even though it seems kind of sophisticated and a lot of science, the program we've been able to simplify. One of the best things I ever heard, it was from a, a um, in California, it was actually in California where you guys are. It was a, um, a person in functional medicine and they looked at our program and they looked at the business model and they said, I've been in functional medicine for 29 years. I don't know how you did it, but you managed to take a very sophisticated subject, hormones, and you managed to McDonaldize it wow. and make it accessible to the average woman, let alone the average owner. Owners don't need to have special degrees either. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter because we're doing all the teaching and it's natural. So it's not affecting anything medically. So who are typically your owners of a, of a B-Balance franchise? When we started, we really thought women, 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 of course, because they can relate to this. And it really was, okay? A lot of owner operators, a lot of couples where they're working together, the husband may either just be supporting overall, or he may be supporting by going, hey, I'll do back office stuff. I'm going to do finances, whatever. But a lot of couples, which is nice, but the woman is the face. And then in some cases, you know, we have a lot of multi-unit owners because there's a lot of advantages to multi-unit with this because of a couple a couple reasons, which I'm happy to share if you want me to, but you know, no, let, well, let's back up for a second. So you have 26, sure. yeah, you have 26 franchises in six States currently in California, Minnesota, Texas, Florida, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. So it was founded by your sister initially in 2014, that first location, but you started franchising in 2015. So 
Right. I'm kind of curious on like what made you decide to ultimately franchise the concept? Do you have a franchise background? Yeah, great question. Great question. Actually, it was interesting. My sister actually started some years before that. She had her center for a while. And then her goal was to get on, you know, to promote herself, like almost like to be like the brand, you know, for herself, you know, sure. to do it, to get the word out by getting a name for herself. And she did, she had an agent. And she was able to get on shows as big as like CBS as the doctors, which was huge out in California. I went with her and all that. But the problem was we noticed that even when you get on a show that big mm -hmm. and it, and it goes well, you're not getting tons of calls or business from it. And what I realized was this is a very intimidating subject for women hormones, and it's a very personal subject. So I kind of concluded that the best method to get the word out with this is to go with franchising because Franchising is individual model, you know, individual, you know, the same system, but individual models where there's women in a center locally meeting with women face to face. You just want another, most women just want another woman their age that can relate to what they're dealing with. And that's what we found to be the most effective way. That's why I decided to go with franchising. We, we could have easily said, hey, we're going to do an infomercial. We're going to get it out there. But I, I think that this deserved because of I really think we're creating a new industry here that's mm -hmm. going to grow into a billion dollar industry. I really believe this deserved more than a short term, doesn't last long infomercial type thing. That's right. why I went with franchising. I thought that's the way to go. I think that's brilliant. And what about your, your ideal buyer or your ideal franchisee? Is it somebody who is, is it manager operated or would I be operating it myself as the franchisee? No, that's a great question. It really, a lot of owner operators, but it could be either way. What we, what is so neat about this business is there's a couple things that I always say jokingly that scream scale me about this business. And what they are is first of all, very small space. You only need 800 to 1200 square feet. It's very, very small. Mm -hmm. So small footprint. Secondly, minimal staff. Okay. Simple concept, by the way, too. Like it's not, you'd say, well, the subject matter is so sophisticated. Yeah. But what's the model? The model is woman comes into your center meets with another woman in a room and you hand her some stuff. Pretty simple, less moving parts than a coffee shop, right? So you got that. And then the last thing is the staffing. Most people in franchising are, and I get this, they could say, well, I manage 30 people in my company, but the minute they're going to have to manage their own people in their own business, it's a little intimidating. Sure. It's like, geez, who are these people? Can I count on them? What's so neat about this business is you can run a vibrant be balanced center with one woman full-time and one woman, it could be the owner, mm -hmm. but one woman full-time and one woman part-time. That's it. A group of women that are mature and are, you can, they're, they're reliable and they're purpose-driven. So when you ask who looks for this business, number one is purpose-driven, meaning people that say, I want to do a business, but I want to make a difference in the world. Sure. Like a senior care franchise or like a children's education franchise, this would fall into that category. I want to make a difference out there. Most women relate to this a lot, but then we realize after a while, hey, there are couples and there are men that are very interested in it because they see the need. And then there are some men and we've, and we have some of those, you know, some men owners that are, that are like, they're bi good business people and they're, and they've already managed people before and women, mm -hmm. you know, women and men. So they're, they're able to do a good job as a kind of semi-absentee and do multiple units. Of course, no man is doing one center. If a man is involved, mm -hmm. it's going to be because he's another layer. He's not going to work in the center normally. Right. You know I mean? You, you need to do multiple. So, so anyway. my assistant Savannah told me to ask you uh, about this um, notorious guy. What is that okay. all about? What is notorious well, guy? It, I, I don't want to cut you. He might, he <laughs> might uh, give me a hard time. If I call him notorious, but we, we, he's a good, good, good gentleman. Very, very successful businessman. He's in Texas and I'll tell you his story quickly. He wrote a book. Okay. About his life, which is amazing. But he basically started out as a lab tech at 21 years old in, in Texas. Okay. And he ended up building the second largest MRI outpatient system in the country, sold it 25,000 investments. So this is in his book, sold it for a hundred million dollars. So pretty successful. Mm -hmm. Then he decided he likes health and wellness. So he got into uh, franchising with Orange Theory, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Okay. Yes. He became the largest owner of Orange Theory in the world with 33 locations in the Dallas area. He ended up selling them for another 66 million right before COVID, which he said was just lucky, but he sold it to a private equity firm and he wanted to stay in health and wellness, or you wanted to be in that, in that space. And we met and we hit it off and he saw this and he said, this is the next big thing in health and wellness. And he wanted to jump in. So he bought the rights to all of Dallas 
and all of Austin. And he now has right now, as of now, he has uh, three centers in the um, in the Dallas area and they're go- they're growing from there. How did you find your first 10 franchisees? That's like the number one thing I get from like a new franchisor that is trying to start out. Um, they always ask like, how do you get your first 10? How did you get your first? Yeah. And I know they say, I think the statistic I heard was 80% of franchises concepts never get past 10 locations. That's what Mm. I was told. So I know it's tough. I will tell you one of the things that helps with this business is even if everything isn't perfect, because nothing's ever perfect at the beginning of any franchise. Sure. When you have the passion of franchisees caring about what they're doing too. Obviously the goal is to make money and that's obviously the the thing, but they care about what they're doing and that kind of helps you through a lot of ups and downs. But I will tell you, it's very organic with our business. It's organic as far as referrals. Women are, of course, talk to each other more than men do. Mm -hmm. They're very intimate with each other and they're basically the business retail wise grows because everybody's sharing the life changing experience they have and, and you get tons of referrals, but from a business standpoint, same thing. I'll give you an example in Philadelphia. We open our second location in Philadelphia. One of our employees opened another location like mm-hmm. separately with her husband. And then one of the clients of that for that first Philadelphia location opened another location. So there's an example of three locations coming from one and so that was definitely a part of it, as well as us just organically growing it through, you know, through marketing and all that kind of thing, too. I mean, ideally, that's how you want to do it, right? You want to do it through referrals and through people who have actually maybe even experienced the product. Exactly. And we've never run into I've never run, I've talked to a lot of people in the franchise business. I've never run to a business where you hear as much from the clients saying as they walk out, I could own one of these or I could work here sure. like there's that happy and thankful for how much their life has changed and improved that they're, they're like saying, Hey, I might want to work here just because I like it so much and help other women. Or they're like, I I can own one of them. I'd like to franchise. I'd like to have a franchise. Well, David, we hear that a lot. Yeah. So what you said earlier, of course we want to make money, but you're changing people's lives and you're giving people their lives back in many ways when it comes to hormone therapy. Exactly. And we have in our, in our logo, we have a butterfly. So just to give you a little tidbit on that, that butterfly has two meanings. One is transformation from going from caterpillar to butterfly. We're helping the woman be the best woman she can be. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's one of the reasons for the butterfly. But the other reason for the butterfly is if you've ever heard the term, the butterfly effect, which is you make one small change in one part of the world and it can change so many things in the world. We look at it as the women really are the foundation of the home. Okay. The wife, the mother, you know, the, the, the emotional, you know, mm-hmm. foundation. So if they're the foundation of the home, if you change them, you change the world. Okay. You're better families, better, um, better marriages. I mean, it really, really makes a big difference in, in their lives. And so we look at that as the butterfly effect. We're helping to make the, the world a better place by, by making better families and better marriages, better relationships. Absolutely. So. That's super exciting. You're, you've got a greater purpose. Exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. And one of the things I will just say as a side note, one of the symptoms that is, probably the least it's just not taken very seriously is mood people see a mood oh i'm in a good mood i'm in a bad mood mood from a clinical sense could mean i'm on a high or i have depression like Mm -hmm. it's a really big deal and people always think and i know men have said this many times and we have to scold them for this when their wife is you know they're feeling a certain thing like oh you're just being hormonal and they make it like it's a joke or something like that it's an actual physical thing. And we've had so many husbands say, and I kind of laugh about it because they'll say to me, I see a big difference in my wife's mood. Of course. And when I hear that, I want to know more and none of them want to tell me. It's almost like they don't want to jinx it. So they don't uh, tell me anything. But what they're basically saying in so many words is she doesn't snap at me as much or she's not as tense or things. It sounds like we can make a joke about that. Right. That's going to make the marriage and life day to day a lot smoother but I want everyone to understand it's not a thing. Oh, she's just being moody. It's a physical hormone thing that can cause that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying every time. Okay. I'm saying it's really a thing. And so us being able to say, this is going to make a big difference. That's it's huge. It's a huge thing. I'll tell you one quick story. That was one of my favorites. It was one of our Philly franchises said to me, they said, Hey, we had a husband stop by. And, you know, and not a, not a lot of, even though the program works for men, by the way, and we do have a small percent of okay. men doing the program uh, on the weight loss part of it. She said, a husband stopped by. And I thought that was interesting. And I said, well, wh- what do you mean? And she said, well, he stopped by 
his wife's been on the program for three weeks and he wanted to stop by to let, to say, thank you. Wow. Thank you for giving me my wife back. Now the story we heard from that is it wasn't about, you know, before anybody jumps to conclusions, it wasn't about thanks for making my wife thinner. Yes. Did she lose the stubborn weight? Yes. It wasn't about that for him. This guy turned out to be a doctor and his wife was 49 years old. And what he told us in his testimonial was I've been married to her for 25 years and I love my wife and I know my wife. But in the last nine years since she turned 40, between hot flashes, lack of sleep, low energy, low libido, all these mood issues, he said, I feel like I didn't know her anymore. Mm -hmm. And in three weeks, not three months, not three years, three weeks on Be Balanced, and he's feeling like he's getting the wife back that he married. I don't even know how you put a price on that. That's, that's amazing. That is one of my, and we hear that a lot, but he said it so well. That's why I share that story. Well, that has me wondering then, is there a natural testosterone therapy that could be brought into your center? It's it's one of those things. I'm going to say that's above my pay grade, so I'm not okay. going to say anything about that. Okay? okay. There is definitely things with testosterone, but that it, we are really focused on uh, the weight loss part of the program. It, it's really our program for a man is like a healthy version of Atkins or, or ketogenic diet. You know what I mean? It's a healthier version of that. Mm -hmm. But I will say for women, what some of the supplements do is support the body to give the woman the tools to help herself. That's what we're really doing. So yeah, we're not, we really aren't going to go there. Our focus is women. That is the market. It's literally cool. just to let you know of the $72 billion weight loss market, 85 to 90% of that people paying money for weight loss and mm -hmm. programs, not 85 to 90% of it is women. They care more about their appearance than men. And th it's just, that is the market. So that's why we're focused on it. Yep, what about, um, sure. how do you know, David, as the as the, uh, the CEO of the company, that you can scale more quickly? Because you want to impact as many lives as possible. How do I know? Well, I don't, I learn, you learn as a CEO, as a leader, that you don't know everything. That's the wisest way to be. You right. surround yourself with experts in all different areas. But one of the things I will tell you that's been challenging is, with this business is whenever you pioneer something, it's going to be tougher. I, I end up going to a franchise show and I'm like, oh, look, they're, they have their 30th location of another sandwich shop. And right. you go, why? We're, we This thing changes lives. But you know what? People understand sandwiches. Yes. That's what it is. This is unique. We even learned that even consultants, like some of the brokers and franchise, because they're almost intimidated with this. Because what happens is they end up presenting Be Balanced senior care and a, a children's education to some client, the client doesn't have any questions about children's education or, or senior care. And they have a million questions about be balanced and the, and the, and the consultant keeps going, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then what does he do after that? I'm never presenting that again. Cause that's intimidating. So we are educating them as best we can. Our biggest answer to that is please give us one phone call, one chance to whether to the consultant or to a retail person let us give us an hour or a half hour to explain a little bit to you. You're never going to get it in a minute. So let us explain it. Let the experts explain it. And that'll help you to, to, to help us to grow because people have a better understanding of it. That, that's really what the challenge has been. That's why we haven't grown faster than we even have at this point. David, so. I get it. I totally get it. I dealt with the same exact problem when I launched my concept in 2003. There, there were no other kids sports league no, the, franchises. Brokers had right. no idea how to sell it. We would communicate right. it to them, try to explain it. But they would still, if when they're presenting three different concepts, the two other concepts that are just easier to understand without having to really thoroughly explain what it is. Yeah, we understand that now. And we're working on that, uh, working on, and we always knew like with our marketing, we yeah. better communicate this in the best possible way because it isn't something out there. My, the joke I make all the time is I'll use Texas as an example is women in Texas are not sitting at their kitchen tables right now going, what is that one business that helps me with my stubborn weight and my hot flashes and my sleep and my energy and my mood? Like that's a unicorn. <laughs> they don't even know that exists. Right. So awareness is such a key thing, but understanding that it exists is a key thing. Mm -hmm. So yes. And mm -hmm. it, so it's very exciting, but we are dedicated to getting that word out and making this a household name. And I truly believe it's going to create a new industry, weight loss industry, billions of dollars, hormone therapy industry, billions of dollars. This is going to be a billion dollar industry where we combine both of them and we do it naturally. That's, that's what, what this is. How does your yeah. team help franchisees get clients? So do you help them with marketing? That's got to yes, be the- We probably spent more money on market, not on actual marketing initially, but on professional marketing firms to 
figure out the best way to communicate this to the world. I always knew that was important. I'm like, look, sales is one thing. You sit me down, even me as a guy, even though men don't work in the business, sit me down for 10 minutes with a woman and she's, I, I have her credit card. She's doing this program because she really can relate to it. Mm-hmm. But marketing is different. It's seven words or 30 seconds. And what is the best seven words or the best thing to do in 30 seconds to communicate what you do? And that's tough. We're not experts on that. So we surround ourselves with top, top marketing firms and invest a lot in that. And now we have a great team. We have a marketing director. We have a team in marketing that help the franchisees. We guide them. It's it's custom based on the area and all that. But I will give you one example of the main way we drive people to us. Mm-hmm. And that is through, we used to call it a hormone assessment. Now we call it a wellness quiz, but it's free. And all the marketing says, look, do you have stubborn weight problems? Do you have hot flashes? Are you dealing with sleep issues that you're struggling with? Take this wellness quiz. Maybe we can help. Maybe it's your hormones take this free quiz. And what they're doing is taking this little quiz, it basically telling us all about the issues they have. It's almost like therapy because they're re- they're realizing I have this, I have this, I have this. And then they get an email back after they send that in saying, we see that you do have some issues that could create, you have a hormone imbalance, sure. you have an imbalance or something to that effect. And we're going to have one of our uh, wellness coaches contact you. And then that is what's considered a lead. And what I love about this lead is, and I, we realized this a while back, This is different than your average lead. If someone's buying insurance, they may already have bought it. This is something where nobody's really helping these women. So you could not get a hold of them and six months later call that same woman. And she's not, she might be worse, but she's not any better because she hasn't found a solution. So the leads are valuable and they can continue to work them forever until they get, get the help. I mean, we are the last stop. Many, many women, what we hear over and over again is, Three words in the in the in the first consultation. I've tried everything, 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 and nothing is working for them. So we're their final stop, and then we make that change. Imagine how dramatic that is for them when, for the first time, they're like, "I've been trying to lose this 19 pounds for the last five years. I just lost it in a month, and on top of that, my hot flashes went away. I'm sleeping deep, and my energy's up. Like that's a fantasy to them, and it's happening. And then. We have a way of maintaining it, which is good for business owners because then there's a residual income. For the of course. As well. so. Can we elaborate a little bit on the training and support that you provide the franchisees? Yes, we have something called Be Balanced University, which is about 56 hours of training videos and training and, and quizzes, online right. training. And then there's a week's worth of training coming to home office. Mm-hmm. And that training is more practical because they have that. They've done the online ahead of time to get a, a head start. Then they come here and they visit centers and we do role playing and they're basically practicing doing you know the practice of running the business. And then we have a when they first start, we have a soft opening where we have staff go out and make sure everything's running properly and all that. And then we have a grand opening. In fact, we're going to be out in California, Woodland Hills. It's on the edge of LA. Mm-hmm. It's our second location in California. Their grand opening is next week. So we're going to be out nice. there next week. And that's the grand opening where I will even be there. But we have a sta- four of the staff are going. And we're going to be doing everything we can to support them and work with the people to really get the word out for that location. That's awesome. So what's the investment range for the franchise opportunity? Yeah, it's actually considered, and I didn't know this term, they call it low cost of entry, but if you're in the 200,000 range, you're cons- there's lots of franchises that are 500,000, a million. Sure. 200,000, our range is 156 to 208. Okay. So I use the 200,000 as just like a, hey, this is this is an investment. And so it's considered a fairly low investment. And that's another reason why uh, uh, we've talked to a lot of consultants about this. If you have somebody that's willing to, that, that has 600,000 to invest in a business, you might show them a bunch of lo- franchises that are 600,000 investment. Sure. Or you could show them the opportunity to do three be balanced with less of a footprint, probably all three of them put together and make more money. And we've done some comparisons where you have potential to make more money because, and, and have less staff, you know, three centers with six to nine happy women that love what they're doing. Yep. And we're excited about that because I really believe that. And we've seen it. We have a a, a franchisee in Pittsburgh that's also a multi-unit owner. We have a few and she's just killing it in Pittsburgh with three locations there, just doing incredibly well. And you build off each other. They're all the same area. That's what you want. You want to build off of the the same local areas. So the marketing's efficient and things like that. Sure. What's been your biggest surprise since being a franchisor? I will say it probably was the thing I didn't think about. Like I was so excited about how brilliant it is. Like, you know how many people say to us, they'll do the program or they'll see and understand the program. Like, 
why is this already a multi-million dollar business? And that's where I say that probably my biggest surprise is when you pioneer something that's new that no one, you know, people don't fully understand or didn't exist before. It's not like, oh, on every corner, there's a, yeah, there's a pizza shop on every corner. There isn't a natural hormone balancing. There isn't any. So when you pioneer something, I think my biggest surprise to answer your question is how that would be the biggest challenge is really have something so great but not be able to, 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 to understand that you, you got to communicate it in the best way. And it's going to take a little longer to get the word out. But when people find out about it, you got super sharp businessmen like this person in Dallas mm -hmm. that is like, he gets it. Yeah. You know, to me, that to me is the biggest endorsement of all. You have a person that successful saying, Hey, this is the next thing I want to do because it's the next big thing in franchising. Yeah. You know, for in, in health and wellness, I should say. David, it is it's definitely not easy to be pioneering and opening a category in franchising, but you're gonna hit a tipping point and it's just gonna be Thank you for the encouragement, Frank. I, <laughs> I, I I believe you. I believe you. And that's exciting. It is. I, I believe it. I it's gonna take time and it's gonna take uh patience, but just keep doing what you're doing and you're gonna get there. And once it tips, man, there's there's no stopping you. That's exciting. And, and by the way, we've had many, um, you know, the, more of the specialized one, which because that's the only thing I'd be ever interested in, in the future, but private equity firms that specialize maybe in health and wellness, whatever. So many of them contact us just with the amount of locations we have. They're already interested because yeah. they see the potential of it. So they take their time, but they certainly court you. And we've had a, a, a lot of attention from these I bet. firms. So that's exciting. What's your vision for the company? Like how big is big number of locations? Or geographic reach? What are your thoughts? I would say there, you know, I would say that there's no limit, but I don't believe that I'm going to be the one. Like I'm realistic on that. Like I want to take it to a certain level. I'd like to take it to at least myself, you know, 50 locations. Mm -hmm. But after that, or more, you know, 50 to 100. But after that, it's definitely going to be the experts in not any old private equity, but the type of private equity that specializes in this area and cares about, because they do, they, obviously their goal is to make money, mm -hmm. but also to infuse it with the expertise, infuse it with the funding and really take it to the next level. But so my goal is really to make this a category of business that didn't exist before called natural hormone balancing, like not weight, weight loss is a category, hormone treatment, hormone therapy is a category. This is its own category. So that is my vision is to make that be a household name as a new category of business. That's what I'd like to do. And that's going to take a lot of locations. Yeah. I know that, you'll, so. get, you'll get there. What about uh, like a potential franchise owner? What's, what's a piece of advice that you give them when they're considered joining? I would definitely say one of the biggest things that we realized was we, well, we used to hear a lot from marketing firms about all the techniques of marketing, right? And one of them that always was in there was community marketing, you know what I mean? Grassroots, right? And I always thought it was just a throwaway because I'm not an expert in this. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're just saying that to just as an extra thing because it's free and might as well tell me. But we realize now, because we've heard it enough from these professional marketing firms, this, and to all, not just be bounced to all businesses, but especially to us, grassroots community marketing is such a key to complement the other marketing. So what I would stress to a first franchisee is you don't be shy. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to get out there in your community. And when you think about it, you could say that about any business, but imagine a business that already grows organically anyway, because women are talking to each other and excited about it. Even more of a reason to focus on community marketing. So that's what would be the big piece of advice is, Please focus on that. Don't discount it and say, well, that doesn't cost money. It's just my time and I'm not comfortable. Well, get comfortable or find someone that's comfortable with it. And I will tell you that we've talked to a lot of them that were nervous about doing it. And then they go to a networking event and guess what? They meet people that go, what do you do? I'm an accountant. Who cares? Mm -hmm. What do you do? I'm a real estate agent. Who cares? They hear that all day long. <laughs> then you say, oh, I do uh, natural hormone balancing. It's this you And you tell them a couple of things. They're the, you're the most interesting person in the room. They love it. They want to right. talk more about it. So it really is exciting. It's funny how a person who doesn't even buy a franchise yet is looking at it. They're not an expert at explaining it, but they start explaining it to one of their friends and their friends are already saying, we will be a customer as soon as you're open. And they didn't even explain it that well. And the women are already saying, I'll be a customer. So, so I would say, don't waste the opportunity to, to do grassroots and community marketing. Partner with local businesses get out there in the community and spread the word. It will not only work by itself, but it will complement the money you're spending on marketing. Mm -hmm. So that would be my big piece of advice Cool to get things started. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned about this, the wellness quiz, when we're trying to get a cust a potential client member, 
But what about technology as a whole? Does technology play a role as a franchisee in the uh, uh, in the yes, operation of the business? Uh, yes. This is going to be the area I'm going to tell you that I'm the least expert on. But we did choose to go with major systems when we started this business because we said we're not going to change systems part way in. Sure. Even though we only have, even with only a few franchises, we went with a support system called Frank Connect, which I'm sure you're familiar. Oh yeah, with all yeah, big, I know Frank Connect well. So yeah, you know, all the big franchises use it. And we went with uh, another system uh, called Zenodi for our CRM and our POS system. And that's a company like, like for example, Marriott uses them for their spas all over the world. It's huge. But we went with these. So technology is definitely a factor here. But we went with these systems because we said we want them to be able to focus on what they love about the business, helping the clients and all that, and let the systems help support everything else. So technology is definitely a big part of this. I'm just not an expert in that. Either. No, that's okay. So, I, I, I particularly asked that question because I sense that there's not a lot of heavy lifting for a franchisee to do, especially from the technology side either. This is all about getting out in the community, like you said earlier, and it's about the relationship that the center has with the client. And this is really about just promoting. It, it is personal. And if you consider social media and digital marketing as technology, of course, that's a big part of this. Of course. You know what I mean? yes. But it's all complemented. Like example, one of the greatest things we've done is we've had photo shoots now. Can you imagine having a photo shoot? In, well, we've done it as a home office for everyone, professional photo shoots. But we said you could get a professional photographer and then get a friend that does makeup and a friend that does hair and make your clients that have succeeded. So many of them do a photo shoot, pick five of them and do it and then have them post on, on Facebook and say, if you want to know what I did, you know, check out this, all kinds of business from that. So there's, you know, you're using technology there too, if you call that technology. Sure. You know, you know the, the folks that typically listen to the podcast are either like emerging founders such as yourself or people that are even thinking of buying a franchise. So I would imagine sure. one of the questions that a potential franchisee is probably thinking of because of this is even though it's natural thinking about risk and liability. So I'm sure it's come up as a question. Can you, can you kind of, of expand on that? Sure. Yes. Uh, one of the things is because it is all we, first of all, we have a, a, in fact, I was just discussing this with a franchisee recently. We have some um, doctors on our board. Mm -hmm. So even though we're non-medical, we want to know what we're not supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? That was the goal. It's not to learn medical stuff. It's because we're totally natural, totally non-medical. So what we've done is we have forms that are done by regulatory attorneys that are, this is what their business is, is to make sure you're doing everything right. So what people are signing off on. But I can tell you that here's the biggest risk. That's kind of, it sounds kind of ironic. If someone comes in and they're on a bunch of medications, like let's say blood sugar and blood pressure, some of the common ones. Sure. They're going to sign up for the program. We have a green light, yellow light, and red light. Red light is don't sign those people up, and they have the standards for that. It's pretty serious stuff. Yeah. Yellow light, there's a bunch of things in there. Yellow light just means you need to get your doctor to approve you doing the program. But most people are in green light. And in green light, you could literally have five medications or less, mm -hmm. and they could be blood sugar and blood pressure. And the only thing we're telling you is you sign up, sign them up, and then you say to them, hey, here's the good news you're probably going to have to reduce or eliminate these medications as you're doing the program. So make sure you monitor them like yes. your doctor tells you to and go to or go to your doctor to do that. So we're not doing it. We're telling them to go to their doctor. And why wouldn't they do that? They're incentivized. Who wants to be on medication if you don't have to? Of course. So we have had thousands of people go off of their blood sugar, blood pressure, some of the most common ones because of the program making them healthy. So the biggest danger of this program is you're going to be over medicated if you don't pay attention. That's it. And that has nothing to do with us. We're getting you healthy and then you don't need your medication. So don't take it. You see what I mean? But we're not doing that. We're having them do it with their doctor. So we work closely with them. And so there really isn't any kind of real high risk with that. We follow everything closely. We tell them which people to take and not take. But what I'm saying is the majority really can do this program. I had a doctor tell me yesterday, it's on our board. He said, you know who has more liability? The grocery store that's selling, oops, I shouldn't say a brand, soda. Let me say soda. Yes. You, there's more of a, a risk of a, a grocery store selling them soda and potato chips right. than you have. More liability to them because we're helping them get healthy and it is natural. So it's not going to interact. When I say not interact, it's not going to hurt them, mm -hmm. but they may need to reduce their medications because- And that's the should. goal. That's it. By the way, I also learned that Obamacare, just learned this from a doctor, which I did not know. 
has put something in place that encourages doctors to encourage their, their, their patients to do wellness solutions. So they're almost obligated to you support their, their patients when they do our program. So yeah, so it's great. That's awesome. Okay, so if somebody's interested in opening a Be Balanced franchise, where can they find more information? You could go to either uh, bebalancedcenters.com and then there's a there's a part of it on franchising or you can go to bebalancedfranchise.com and you'll you can get information from that. Uh, we are not so big that I can't tell you that my cell number is 717-587-3395 and you can call me directly or text me and we'll set up a time for you to talk to our director of franchise development. Her name is Diane and she has tons of experience in this world. Uh, she worked for another large weight loss company for many years, was an executive. We're so thankful to have her. So she's a great part of our team and they will end up talking to me at some point as well. David, that's awesome. You might actually get phone calls from people that just want the actual service. Right. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I will definitely refer them. I don't talk a lot about hot flashes with people, but as the man of the business, but it, we, I am surrounded by women and I love it. It's wonderful. We have a team of women at the office and, but there are again, husbands that are owners and actual, you know, like men that are primary owners of this business. And, and they see the need. I mean, anybody can sure. see the need of it and go, I see the potential of this. I, I want to build this. But most of the time when it's a man without his wife being involved, he's definitely a person that's saying, I'm going to do multiple units. I'm right. going to build something. Well, David, this has been incredible. I, I love what you're doing and you're impacting potentially millions of lives long term here. So I'm going to, I wish you all the continued success with the company. I and you're going to blow this thing up, man. I want to finish up though. I always finish. Thank with, you. I, yeah, you're welcome. I finish with the tip jar because the franchise community is so generous. Now you've been in franchising really for eight years now. So give us a best practice. If somebody wanted to franchise their concept tomorrow, what's a piece of advice you'd give them before they start franchising? I would say probably one of the most important things would be to, you know, get because the franchise business is so giving and it is, it's one big family. I would definitely say in all areas of your business, of, of the business being developed, like the vendors, the, really the starting with the franchise development piece, like the, to develop it into a franchise, you know, the legal piece of that, right. get referrals, get referrals from people in the franchise business. I was grateful when I started, I was able to talk to, sounds kind of funny, but Ann of Auntie Ann's Pretzels. So I got some great advice from oh, Ann of Annie Ann's nice. because she was local. So it's so nice. And I've already been able to help others too. So I, and I welcome that as well. I will give any advice. I'll tell you all the mistakes we made so you can avoid them. But I would say my biggest piece of advice is don't go into it and just pick, you know, mm -hmm. vendors and pick who you're going to have franchise the do the legal piece. Definitely ask for referrals from someone else in the franchise business. People are happy to do that and take the time to give you the advice. And that's what I would recommend doing. David, great job. Thank you so much for being on the show. This was fantastic. I wish you all the best. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning into the Emerging Franchise Brands Podcast. For additional insights, guest applications, and to stay connected, visit us at efbpodcast.com. The Emerging Franchise Brands Podcast is for entertainment purposes only, and the views expressed do not necessarily represent those of Emerging Franchise Brands, its host Frank Fumi, or Emerging Franchise Group, LLC. Any discussed franchise or investment opportunity requires thorough investigation, obtaining proper disclosure documents, and expert consultation before making any investment decisions. The podcast and its host do not offer professional advice or endorsements, and they hold no responsibility for actions, representations, accuracy, or consequential damages related to the podcast content.